Hey, welcome back to the Lee Chandler Commercial Finance Podcast. So today we are going to talk about something that might be on your mind. All right. I'm going to give you guys a few a few market updates. Uh, we're we'll talking about the Federal Reserve, uh, particularly out of St. Louis, that chairman wants you guys to know something important. And then ultimately, I want to explain uh, what's going on with uh, retail investors. All right. So let's get started. So as of right now, you are probably aware of the pandemic and some people are calling this the quote unquote post pandemic. It, it seems almost like uh, someone snapped their finger and the very next day everything was post pandemic. Um, so I can't really tell you where that started or stopped. Um, what I can tell you tell you all is that uh, the pandemic has become somewhat of a scapegoat for larger companies. And I'll tell you guys how this all ties into commercial finance um, at the end. But let me give you guys some updates. Some of you all are familiar with SoftBank. Uh, if you are aware of Cash App or other um, digital banks that are popping up, uh, SoftBank was one of the first. And they're having problems with some executives in China. You know, what that ultimately has to deal with is that their failure of IPOs. All right. So keep that feather under your hat. So in reference to IPOs, as we all know, when it comes to commercial finance, the IPO is what allows the company to really make its largest gain because, you know, different under underwriting based off of EBITDA, et cetera, et cetera, turning, you know, a dollar of pre-profit into possibly uh, 300 times that amount. All right. Or 30 times that amount just off of um, an IPO. So. All these things are connected, and, and I'll explain them in a little bit. So right now we have inflation that is technically rising, right? The index obviously has risen. We have uh, stocks that are in some, in many cases, uh, dipping. We have treasury bonds that are also not looking too well at the pe present moment. However, um, it's causing people to believe that in the future, short term future, five, 10 years, uh, that, it will, that it will increase. What that is causing people to do is it is causing people to liquidate, to leave treasury bonds. OK, it's causing people to leave treasury bonds. So that's another feather under, under your head. All right. So government bonds are basically being considered as trash at this point. So the market is responding to what's going on. And essentially, they are. Uh, as far as the short term is concerned, there is less, less confidence in uh, the governments, basically. So people are not, are not willing to bet on on the government. You have uh, different you have different areas such as, you know, the European Central Bank, uh, which is claiming that interest rates within a 24 month time frame will decrease or uh, basically be a minus or sub 1% or 2%. We have the Federal Reserve out of St. Louis that is suggesting that interest rates need to rise 1% within uh, the current calendar year. So what would that look like if all these things are true? It would mean that within, within 12 months, interest rates would raise 100 base points or 1%. It would mean that within 24 months, supposedly, interest rates would actually drop one to 2%. So either we're at it, we're, we're basically will be in the same exact area or we'll be, uh, with, we'll have a lower interest rate. Okay. Now here's what's interesting for quote unquote stock investors, people in the stock market, who like they uh, call it equities, right? So equity investor, equity investments, um, have not been as volatile as they as they are right now since 2008. And going back to the IPOs and going back to the mentioning of the dip earlier with treasury bonds and stock market, it's causing investors, quote unquote, retail investors to exit treasury bonds. So they're, so people are afraid of treasury bonds at the moment. And they're so afraid of where they can put their money that they're all automatically just putting their money into the stock market. Now, I want you guys to think about this. Treasury bonds are dipping. 
The stock market is dipping. People are choosing to take their money out of treasury bonds that are dipping and to put it into the stock market. Okay. So that's how all this is, is, is tying in. Now, what's interesting is that 56% of Americans, as of right now, per uh, the Gallup poll, 56% of Americans are basically investing in the stock market in some shape or f- in some fashion. All right. Now, retail investors, individuals who are non accredited, non professional, uh, they could possibly work someone who works a full time job and then also happens to you know, be a day trader in the morning or a day trader at night or whatever else. They come home, they trade in the stocks or maybe they're on, they're on their phone and they're they're trading stocks the same way that they gamble uh, on an NBA or NFL basketball game. All right. That has risen. So 20 years ago, as, as, a, as a percentage of households, 10 um, percent of someone's wealth who was active in the market, 10 percent of their wealth was actually the stock market today. It is 27 percent. And I would would just say round up 30 percent of their wealth is basically in the stock market. Okay, So we want to we want to think about that for a moment. As fear is increasing in the overall economy, more and more people are becoming frantic. You have inflation. You have we have hyper prices. We even have stock prices increasing super high. Right. Uh, inflation's everywhere. And so people are saying, hey, I'm just going to put, put my money in the stock market. Now, what's interesting to me is I want you guys to think about this. Whenever um, economies are doing poorly, the primary thing that saves economies is war. Is war. All right. I don't, you can just, you know, review history. The, the thing that saves economies um, is war. The second thing is that there's, norm, there's normally some type of reset reset um, for a currency. And so that could mean that we could possibly go into a a currency reset uh, via, let's say, maybe the Fed coin or the Chinese uh, uh, cryptocurrency. Right. But it's not going to be Bitcoin itself because Bitcoin has a limited supply. Therefore, it's more of like a collective item. It's not an actual currency. So keep that keep that also under your hat. What we're seeing is because most people are not aware of alternative investments out of panic, they're viewing the stock market as the only solution or the only game in town. This is why it is so important to understand how alternative investments work and their benefits. Because even if or when someone does choose to hop in and out of the stock market, like a like a shower, right? Uh, like a cold shower, actually. And even if they do make proper gains, they're still going to be hit with a large tax bill. And ultimately, that could, especially if someone has a W two uh, income, that could perpetuate them in a in a worse condition than where they are, a worse financial position than where they are right now. So it's important right now, especially right now that you understand alternative investments. If you want to still put your money in the stock market, that's fine. You can allocate that. That is a okay. But you don't want to have too much exposure. You don't want to have too much ex- exposure. If you already know that it's volatile, then you know, right, that it's volatile. Therefore, you expect a change and therefore you may expect a loss. But you don't want to be over exposed. You don't, you don't, you don't want to be exposed to where if there is another dip, right, if things do get worse, if bonds do continue to sink, that if that's a majority of your portfolio, it's going to hurt you and it's going to be detrimental to your financial stability. All right. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. I hope the I hope this information really helps you out. Um, ultimately, this is f- to strengthen you all in your fi- in your uh, financial journey. Remember, Commercial finance, commercial finance is one of the gateways to financial freedom. All right. With that being said, thank you for listening and we'll talk to you soon.